Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Our next conversation moves to the southeast where there is some confusion with regards to sit-at-home order uh, by the uh, IPOB. Uh, of course, uh, latest uh, news uh, show that the governors of the southeast have spoken against it. Same as Ohanez and Debo. Uh, brother to Namdekano also was in the news saying that the sit-at-home order should be cancelled because of the NECO examinations. The foundation, of course, of this conversation is, uh, you know, with the IPOB declaring a sit-at-home order every Monday uh, in the southeast until the federal government releases Namdekano, well, their leader of the IPOB, Namdekano. We're going to be speaking this morning with the public affairs analyst, Victor Okai, who's joining us via phone. Good morning, Mr. Okai. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. All right. So let's quickly get your, your first of all, your reaction to the uh, sit-at-home order, you know, and of course, those who are for and against it. Um, you know, what, what's, what, what are your thoughts concerning it? Well, um... A sit at home order, I mean, it's like for me, sometimes, it's like, especially in the South, it's like cutting your nose to spite your face. Uh, why do I say so? It can only hurt the economy of the Southeast if the idea is to make the federal government listen and, um, uh, you know, take note of what they, it is uh, agitating for. Then um, that obviously is not the best way to go about it because it can only, it can only hurt the southeast and the economy of the southeast. And um, as you can see from what has just happened, it looks like in the absence of Kano, um, the new leadership is, um, I mean, is a bit more conscious and aware of this. Although they are still doing a trip at home, but they are aware now that you know if you do that. Especially in this is to affect the future of the, of uh, the southeast, which is the young people of the southeast who are now sitting for their neckle. So I think there's going to be a better way of um, dealing with this. Um, I don't think dialogue has been exhausted completely. I also think that they can approach through the leadership of the southeast, who is not unsympathetic to their court as well, uh, to make the government and the rest of Nigeria listen. Okay, let's um, expand more on the point you mentioned earlier, cutting your nose to spite your face. Um, how do you see this playing out regarding, you know, these IPOB members going ahead to threaten uh, violators of a sit-at-home order, telling them that they have to stay inside or they'll be met with violence, and how that really might affect, you know, activities in the state economically and otherwise? Well, they'll lose their support base because... Um the evil man, if I may use that language or narrow it down, uh, is, um, I mean, he's a businessman. And uh, most of them make their incomes on a daily basis. And so if you want the support of everyone, then you must get the buying of, of everyone. If you must coerce people to sit at home and threaten them and their livelihoods, then obviously it means you're, you're, you don't have the full support of everyone. And you'll be losing more of your sympathizers. Because there are some people who, if they don't work in the day, will not earn. And so I, I think that if they backfire, if they work against the cause rather than, 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 than help the cause. Yeah, and, and um, of course, you know, there's people who, you know, still say that the IPOB still uh, really needs the uh, sympathy and the goodwill of the people of the Southeast. But I want you to share your thoughts on how significant it is uh, if we see today go by and the uh, people of the Southeast actually, um, you know, comply for those who comply without having to be coerced into doing it. Because I've spoken, I've spoken to a few people uh, yesterday in the Southeast who said that they were going to be sitting at home um, not necessarily because they were scared of, you know, being attacked or being coerced, but because they were sympathetic to the cause um, of the IPOB. And, you know, they will, of course, go ahead and stay at home today. Um, so how significant is that, you know, are those uh, people? Well, um, I would say this. Why not be sympathizers of IPOB? Every evil man is the different at heart. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, they may not necessarily all be sympathizers of IPOB or its methods, 
But every Igbo man is a girlfriend at heart, I, I, I dare say. Um, so uh, they do have a support base because they've got sympathy for the cause. You know, many of them feel that they have been unfairly treated in this in the state called Nigeria. Many of them feel that, uh, you know, they have there's, there's no equity that since after the Civil War, they have not been fairly treated. Uh, there is that. But is that the, is the iPhone way the best way to go about it? Not every woman agrees. So while, yes, yeah, they have sympathizers um, to the cause, not everyone agrees with the methodology. Okay. Or the approach. Okay. Um, let's talk about enforcement, the enforcement mechanism of the IPOB, um, you know, to go ahead and make sure that this state at home order is a reality as they plan. You know, we know about the Eastern Security Network, ESN, and the Abia State um, uh, Police Commissioner, CP Janet uh, Agbede, has said that, she, the, you know, the IPOB is likely to use um, the instrument of the ESN to enforce that sit-at-home order. And the police, on, on the other hand, you know, has warned that anyone who dares to threaten the peace and unity of the Southeast would be dealt with. So we've seen situations of clashes between the people and the security officials uh, many times times before. Is this something you might maybe expect, maybe when the NECO exams are over and they want to go back to their seat at home order? I can assure you it's not going to be unavoidable, but the reason is simple. You cannot have a government in the government. And then our, in our constitution is enshrined the freedom of movement, the freedom of association, which means that nobody should curtail anyone's movement or right to go out and mix freely with anyone they want to. And so if anyone wants to curtail that freedom, it's a, it's a violation of the Constitution. So uh, there's bound to be a conflict between this uh, uh, body that is trying to constitute the service of government within the government and the government of the day. Um, and that's not taking away the reason for the agitation or whatever their cause is, but I say that the approach and the methodology may not be outrightly I mean, it's confrontational, obviously. You know, it's confrontational, and it's bound to create problems. Yeah, you know, so there is those angles, you know, but um, uh, there is also, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been in the South, is, you know, for a while. You know, I've spent about 10 years there uh, before moving to Lagos, you know, and I've also get, gotten to see the reaction to some of these sit-at-home orders. Um, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's not necessarily because of fear of coercion it's really just because people take that day off you know as some sort of holiday uh to you know just be at home um which of course will have some effect on the economy of the southeast but i, I want us to talk about leadership now um and who really has the ears of the southeasterners is it ohanez Endigbo? is it the you know southeast you know governor's forum or southeast leadership or is it ipob you know who who would you say at this time, really has the ears of the Southeasterners. Okay, now let me go back to the first thing you said about people sitting at home willingly. Of course, for civil servants, they'll, they'll welcome the holiday. For uh, workers who are not the ones paying salary, they'll welcome the holiday. So there's no doubt about that. They are a large number as well. That is the truth. But I don't think businessmen necessarily call that a holiday. No, no, no general businessman uh, will, will, especially not of a whole stock as far as I know, will be so happy to lose money because, I mean, you know, for, for, for that reason. If there's a better way, they'll prefer that. Now, uh, as for who, who has the ears of the Southeast right now, um, there are another the social cultural group. Uh, our politicians are not uh, they are not trusted by a majority of Nigerians, unfortunately. So, you know, they, unless by fiat, they themselves cannot even call for fiat for what they are expected to be fully carried out. I feel that because of, not necessarily because of their methodology, but because of the ideology. Uh, the ideology is what makes their agitation um you know uh, acceptable across the southeast remember i said to you that every woman is a girlfriend at heart yeah you know so 
they believe they believe in what NPOP is pushing, but not necessarily not all necessarily believe in the methods that IPOB is using. And so as far as the ideology is concerned, uh, what IPOB is pushing is um, is is uh, I mean we're carrying through with the majority of the South Eastern so you can see that they have the ears. You can see the numbers abroad, you know, from the diaspora. You can see the numbers among the people of the Southeast, and it is basically based on inequity in the Nigerian state, perceived injustice, and uh, the fact that they don't think they have been fully reintegrated into the Nigerian state after the Civil War. And, and how would you also suggest that the you know Southeast leadership, political leadership, and of course the Oneza, uh, be able to you know, win you know the hearts of the people, and you know, and of course stand stronger for the people. Uh, because it seems like, you know, a lot of people in the Southeast, you know, see them as simply just, you know, tools. I believe that a leadership other than not the Cardinal, uh, that is more, that it believes more in the use of green than brown, uh, will be, uh, if the event arises and uh, works closely with the political leadership, then they might... There might, there might be a synergy that may work. Don't forget that, you know, um, you know, somebody like I don't want to mention names now, but we know some prominent senators who are openly uh, in agreement with 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 um, uh, Alpha and his ideology. Uh, people like that, uh, I mean, you can get them. You can get them, you know, uh, on board, and you will see. A synergy across board, you know, and they're busy to talk with government and uh, either negotiate or do whatever it is they have to do. Mr. Okai, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, I have seen pictures on social media uh, of, you know, what the Southeast looks like. The roads seem to be deserted, and many people seem to be in support of the sit-at-home order, observing the day Ghost Monday. But what do you think, you know, the IPOB might achieve um, in trying to make sure that their leader is released? And also, this sit-at-home order, cancelled or not, what do you think this announcement, you know, might do? Um, to affect the stakeholders like the UK um, that are working to make sure he's out? Well, the, the suspension is, I mean, I don't think nobody would call it with a suspension, obviously. Um, it's for a good reason, and no reasonable person would say that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but your first question, I didn't quite get it. I'm saying that people it are obeying the sit-at-home order right now. People are obeying the sit-at-home order from what I see on social media. But the essence yeah. of the sit-at-home okay. order in the first place is to, you know, basically go ahead to protest for the release of Namdikanu. But how does this sit-at-home order go ahead to make sure that that happens? And also, how would it affect stakeholders' involvement who are trying to make sure that Namdikanu is out? Well, uh, you judge the future by the past. Uh, if you saw what happened to Azadzaki, uh, you can be sure that uh, now the country is going to be away for a very long time. Because there's no, there's no coercion, no unity between the political class as yet uh, and, and uh, the and IPOB. Because the political class, so the governor say, now the as, um, as an opposition. Some fear him, some, you know, feel threatened by him. So some would rather that he remains in the gulag as similar to the king. So, but if they were to come together as one, as, you, as the case is in the southwest with um, uh, Igbo, then uh, some Igbo, then you can be sure that uh, some political negotiation can be reached. But from what happened to him, the kind of after when he, you know, he was. I mean, he was released on bail. He went out and started speaking fire and brimstone. Uh, it will be difficult to get anyone to stand there for him anymore. It will also be difficult for people to stick their necks out for him. You get, you will have good lawyers, no doubt. But we end with the lawyers. I don't know if the South East will be able to come together as one. Well. Certainly, those who want to do it uh, are people who either fear him or are threatened by him. 
rising popularity, and I'm not sure they are willing to do that. Hmm. All right, and uh, what, what, you, what would you advise um, the federal government at a time like this, um, and maybe also the state government in the well, southeast? Well, the federal government, I'll say to them, be very careful in handling the matter because heads or tail, uh, for me, it's a zero sum game. Let me put it that way. Because uh, heads or tail, you can't say there's a winner or a loser. If you release him, you can't guarantee that you stop making trouble. If you don't release him, that's not a guarantee that trouble will stop. So it's a very delicate matter and requires plenty of wisdom. What needs to a political negotiate uh, resolution to this matter is what will serve best. How that will be done is done for the leaders of the South East, uh, IPOC, and the federal government. All right. Um, we're going to uh, be joined by, you know, another guest. I don't know if you can hear us. Good morning. Uh, can you hear us, sir? Okay, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, we have someone else joining us, um, of course, along with Victor Okai, uh, to share his thoughts on the IPOB Citadel murder in the southeast. You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're still bringing you updates regarding the sit-at-home order um, from the southeast. First of all, we have a report here. It's on the Vanga newspaper, and it's saying that the indigenous people of Biafra has debunked the purported suspension of its sit-at-home order on social media, saying if it didn't come from Radio Biafra or the um, spokesperson of IPOB, that's Emmanuel Powerful, that means it's not from the IPOB. But we'll have our Plus TV Africa correspondent in Emo stage, Oliver uh, joining us to give us more details. Um, Oliver Joseph, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Robin. All right, please tell us where you are right now and what's happening regarding the sit-at-home order. Okay, uh, as, I speak, as I speak, I've been to the Poplar Douglas Road in a world. Poplar Douglas Road is a very busy place and also Wedrow Road in a world. And normal activities are going on, people are going about their businesses, commuters are going about their businesses. Basically, they are not obeying the sit at home order in a you know, way, as you speak. Okay, have you, have um, you interacted with, with um, any of uh, the residents and indigents there? Hello. Did you hear that, uh, Mr. Joseph? Yes, I've been able to talk to some of the residents uh, in my report that, I, that will come late. You have less than one minute for this. We apologize for that uh, break in transmission, but uh, that was Oliver Joseph, uh, Plus TV Africa correspondent in Emo State. Um, give us the details, saying he's at a popular roundabout, but um, the sister don't know order is not being obeyed. And that really conflicts with what I'm seeing online, empty streets. But if we're getting conflicting information um, regarding... Well, different, different states. I think. Different yeah. states. Also, when I first saw these pictures, the questions that came to mind is, are these pictures that were taken during the COVID-19 lockdowns that people are now pushing on social media as a narrative that this sit at home order is being obeyed that's the first question that came to mind because as a journalist i need to be aware of the fact that people cook up fake stories and put them online so that's the first question are people really complying with the sit at home order or are those pictures from the lockdown that are being circulated or to Inugu, give an impression Inugu, Inugu seems or, to you know be in compliance uh, from reports that i have from Inugu state it seems like everyone's at home uh, okay. this morning so anyway, yes, there, there's, there's some states in the southeast, so maybe the response in different states are different. But in most states, especially in the area our correspondent was, um, the sister term order was not being obeyed. I think what's interesting is this information we're getting from the Vanguard newspaper uh, that says that um, the statement that the sister term order was suspended is false. But would, yeah. uh, this, this is unverified as of now. Um, as, as we get more details, we'll relay them to you. Yeah, and you know, it, it should of course bring back or bring up, you know, conversations about how effective or how relevant this would be. You know, if you continue to stay home every Monday, um, you know, how is that in any way going to make the federal government budge? That's know, the question make, I asked Mr. Alkai. What exactly um, is the effect of the sit at home order? Yeah. You know, it, it's um, some of those questions that they need to ask themselves also, you know, and who really will be on the receiving end of the sit at home order, you know, if it's going to be Southeasterners and their is businesses, it a or is it, you know, the federal government? Because, you know, how much 
um, you know, effect. It, it's not like, oh, when the, the Southeast is, um, the, the states aren't, you know, sending money to the government every month, you know, it's, it's a reverse. So it's not like when you, you know, you, um, you know, frustrate businesses in the Southeast for you know, one day, you know, the federal government will have less money. Um, it doesn't necessarily work like that. So um, they, they probably need to have a rethink. You know, I'm mostly concerned about the leadership of the Southeast and, you know, who really has the ears and the voice in the Southeast, if it's Ahanez and Debo, all the governors, and who do the people really listen to, um, you, know, you know, generally and politically, who, you know, would be the one to encourage people to go about their, you know, businesses lawfully, or people tell people to stay home, who's going to encourage people to go vote? You know, where, why aren't they taking advantage of these opportunities? And, you know, long ago, we used to have arguments about how uh, the IPOB, you know, might have, you know, they might believe that they have a great cause that they're fighting for, um, but is there a different way that they could have been able to achieve what their plans are? Would they have been able to get the numbers that they have as followers to get involved with the electoral process, get in, you know, more you know, involved with the system near Nigeria and be able to you know, change leadership if possible, um, make a you know, statement politically if possible? They don't seem to be taking that route in any way. So we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, this is... Um, where we will be wrapping up uh, this morning. Um, we've, of course, had a very interesting conversation starting with the leadership of the APC and the crisis concerning uh, May Malabuni's leadership of the you know, Ketika Committee. And then we spoke about uh, the sit at home order here in the Southeast area. We spoke uh, on Today in History and shared with uh, incidents that happened in South Africa in the 50s, I believe and also in 2014 in the United States. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember where to find us. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel. At Plus TV Africa and at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, I am Aneta Felix, encouraging you to have a beautiful weekend. And I am Musao Gi Have a great Monday. <laughs>